Hey guys, how you doing? VT Maestro here. Hope all is well. Well, this is part two of the video series that I'm shooting for the DIY ground mount solar installation that's uh, grid tied. And uh, as you can see behind me, I got some concrete I need to unload from our uh, Chevy Traverse. Um, I'm going to head down to this site. I need to clean up a few things and today's project is to get the sonal tubes in um, and get ready to do a concrete pour. So I'll take you along. Um, on the project here, show you pretty much step by step what I'm going to do to uh, get the sonal tubes in and make sure everything's square, everything's level. All right, so I'm pretty set up here. Uh, I went ahead and cleared the big rocks out, and I'm getting ready to uh, work on my holes here, getting them in shape here. So, I'll tell you what the process here is. I'm running my string here, and uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure I am centered on the string. And I'm starting from this hole to the end, um, and it actually goes past. Now remember, these set of holes here, the first six are for one array, then the next six down there, and I generally have to get them all straight. This line right here, I've been eyeballing it, it's actually really in great shape, here, so no problem there. Um, but I'm going to do six at a time and then just get both arrays pretty much lined up. So what I'm going to need to do here, walking along, is I'm going to have to dig this hole out and just dig more on this side and get, get it centered. Same thing over here. Alright, i got to make sure corner to corner, corner to corner, if their measurements are the same, then they're square. Alright, really have to think about putting both arrays, they're separate. Both arrays are separate here but I have to get close enough to line them up. And there's some play in it because of how the panels go up and down. So at the mount you're using, there is some flex. Right, so here's another look here with additional rebar in and uh, just eyeballing it. It looks like this hole is gonna have to go out a little bit. This hole is fine. This hole goes out a little bit and I already took this hole out. So I just pulled that rock. It was all one rock. I actually broke it in the hole. I think that wins the prize. All right, look at that. That was all rock. That was one rock. And I took it out in several pieces. My goodness. All right, just taking a look at the uh, contour of the land. You can see that the land we're building the new array on is a little bit higher than the current array. And I'm not going to worry about that too much. Generally, I'm going to come off about six inches, have the sound tube come off six inches from the ground. And it's okay if this array is a little bit higher, but all my sound tubes have to be the same height. All right, looking here, my uh, hole is roughly uh, 32 inches deep. I got to put gravel in the bottom. And then I need to bring my sawn tube up about six inches. So I'm probably going to cut, you know, that's 38 inches, leave, uh, you know, three to four inches of gravel. So I'll probably be around 35 inches for my sawn tube. All right, so taking another look at this, the land slopes up a little bit. So my back is going to have to be higher. And as we go further west, the land slopes down. So I have to count for that too. Okay, so what I'm doing here, measuring, uh, my hole is roughly 32 inches, and I'm going to put at least three inches of stone in, and then I want the sonal tube to actually come out eight inches because it's higher, it needs to be higher in the back and the front, and that should give it a pretty good height off the ground. So I want to measure 37 inches, take several different measurements, just keep turning the sonal tube, and then when I cut, I'm always cutting uh, between the lines that I make. All right, so here's the process here. Go ahead, use two by four, tamp down the soil. I've gone ahead and leveled out my sonal tube and uh, just wanna make sure I can get it level first. Gonna add my stone and then anchor my sonal tube in the stone. And with the stone, I'm gonna push it down the stone and therefore it'll stay in place and I can level it with my two foot level. I'll go ahead and put my two foot level in here get my measurements 
use the stone to balance it and get it level and then I'll go ahead and add dirt to the side and then I'll just tamp it down using the end of a rake add more soil keep tamping it down until everything is solid in there on a brand new sawn tube you're gonna have one end that's perfectly cut but to make sure the other one's perfectly cut first of all I, I try to cut it as straight as possible you can see there's there's a problem here so what I do is I go ahead and take this end push it down on like a cement floor this is completely smooth and I know my other end is gonna be completely uh, square and flat all right got my stone there time to set the uh, sawn tube all right guys so this is how we do it here got an eight foot level got my first one started and then I uh, make sure the hole is big enough so I can level the uh, sawn tube left right back and forth and then I take my level and go across and make sure that they're both at the same height. I also have a string running down that's making sure it's centered in the hole so this all lines up all the way straight down to my last hole. The key thing to do here is to make sure the rocks, put in an ample amount of rocks between three and six inches. Then you have plenty of room to seat the sonal tube going up and down and back and forth. It acts as a leveling agent and it works out perfectly. All right, so it's not rocket science here, but you do have to take your time and make sure you're doing it right. So along with using the eight foot level to go between the two sonal tubes for height, I'm also using a two foot level here to check to make sure the sonal tube is square in the ground. All right guys, so here's where I'm at. I got uh, three holes dug and sonal tubes in place. And uh, I'm gonna change pace now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cement in the sonal tubes. And the reason I wanna do that at this point in the stage is uh, due to the fact that I don't want the sonal tube sitting in the ground for an extended period of time. And I believe it's gonna rain almost every day for the next week. So I wanna get this done. All right guys, so about two bags per sonal tube, depending on the height. Okay, so I do pack it pretty high because I know it's gonna shrink down a little bit. And uh, the next thing I need to do is go ahead and sink in my eight inch uh, uh, J-hook here. And I'm gonna leave the threaded part out and that's what's gonna be my tie down for my hardware. Just gonna use some standard uh, decking hardware here. All right guys, so I'm done for the day here. I got three done, pretty pleased. I just uh, have my line here and I drop my anchors. I did the first one first off because I knew it would be a lot of time from going from the second to the third, which I'm mixing everything by by hand. You know, 80 pound bags of, of cement and it's taken about two per um, sonal tube. So it, it uh, takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort and uh, some time to, to get the mix done. With the next couple of weeks, I may just have to do like one hole at a time, which is cool because uh, I don't have a lot of time. I'm actually going to finish the video here, call this part two, get all the sonal tubes in. Uh, I did the first three and they're roughly all going to be, the rest of them are all going to be the same. Just my span going across is about 55 inches. So finishing part two here of the DIY uh, ground solar project. Uh, until next time, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe, leave a comment, always leave a comment, and a uh, big thumbs up is always appreciated. All right?